This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts expand beyond the familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to the foundation. The foundation. The Foundation of Hard Crowns is brought to you by Alive, Baja Retreat and Spa, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas, Skin Solutions, and Wendy's. The Foundation. Howard Grant's the host, got in radio station 96.9. Drive to is the time you can call the show or use the text line. Yeah, he educates, he informs, he goes against the norm. He's really got that zeal, but he's a child of God. Oh my goodness, live in full effect, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM Radio, Howard Grant Avia Company, the foundation on this absolutely gorgeous Monday afternoon. So happy to be in your company, man. Listen, the line's going to be wide open today. We can talk about the thing. But listen, uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be able to hear this, this uh, the intro. I mean, it just became, kind of flowed right into the thing, right? I'm saying, this thing is growing on me. I'm here rapping the thing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rapping with it. It is crazy. I want to thank all those persons who contributed, man. Thank you, man. I really do appreciate it, guys. I'm I'm glad to be in your company today. I really am. I am. Um, over the weekend, I tried to figure out whether or not I should formalize this conversation, right? Over the weekend, I uh, made a few calls, right? Uh, who was it in the coronation? Well, you know, obviously there was a PLP call. You don't need to stop it, right? Just behave. Say who was it at? Uh, you know, over the, over the over the pond. Uh, you know, they're off elsewhere because I wanted to have a very clear conversation about, you know, this sort of a position that the government has taken, as it relates to what's happening going forward, right? Um, with the Privy Council rather, and the position that they have taken to be able to identify a few things. I want to talk about that also. But before we get into anything, let me be as decent as possible and be able to say Mother's Day is coming. Stop it. You know, I mean, you, you got to do better than that. Mother's Day is coming. Have you lost the love for your mother? That's a question I have for you. If not, come and do some advertisements with us. Let us know where the flowers are going to be. Let us know where the big hats are going to be. Let us know where all the nice clothes are going to be, the, the little dangly things that mothers like. Please hit me up, 827-0111, 827-0111. Before we move forward, let me just thank the persons that continue to be able to sponsor the show. Uh, it says that mothers, mom, moms are special and they deserve the best. Treat them to a spa day at Baja Retreat Spa. Stop by and purchase a gift certificate at their location on East Bay Street or give them a call at 323-6711 or purchase a gift certificate online at www.baharetreat, B-A-H-A-R-E-T-R-E-A-T dot com, Retreat. Dot com. Check that out. Uh, make sure you check that out. I actually asked my wife, I said, baby doll, what you want to do? She asked me like a very weird question. Can I put it out there? I'm going to put it out there. Are you ready for this? Brace yourself. Hold on to the wheel. Let's do this. So my wife, right? <laughs> we, we on the weekend, right? So she said, man, please buy me Kong salad. I'm telling you, so the, the conversations always start with this kind of a Kong salad thing. All right? So she's like, man, buy me Kong salad, please. I'll kiss your toes. I said, baby, this is, these are 40-year-old feet. This is disgusting. What are you doing, right? So she said, <laughs> I said, what are you doing? Why would you want to even say something like that? She said, yeah, you're right. She said, would you kiss mine? 
I said, baby, I love you. I would, of course. I said, baby, I think you need a little pedicure. I wouldn't. <laughs> you know, a little pedicure, right? I said, I think I'm going to try Baja Retreat to get you something. I've been there before. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can try to do that. So go down to Baja Retreat. If your wife is asking you questions like mine, and she wants to know whether or not you still love her to the degree that you kiss her feet, call Baja Retreat and ensure that we can be able to extend that yes with that kind of... Uh, that strong confidence, you know, <laughs> you might give her a shaky yes. Make sure you do that. Give Baja Retreat a call, 323-6711, 323-6711, uh, or check them out online at www.bajaretreat.com. We're going to be with them this week as we move forward to Mother's Day to make some things happen. So I want to do that and be able to get those things done. Uh, I also want to read uh, from Skin Solution, Indulge Mom. Or yourself this Mother's Day at Skin Solutions Day Spa and Salon. Mother Glow's best package, a firm and lift facial with light peel, eye treatment, collagen boosting mask, and it's a one hour for $132 mask solution. It's on Cable Beach west of Bahama. Give them a call at 327-0550. This is wild, by the way. This is wild. Firm and lift facial with light peel. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've been watching some of these scrubs and light peel stuff, and I'm like, I'd like to try that. But nothing is extended like this for Father's Day, so I just want to kind of put that in the atmosphere. Let's make this thing happen for Father's Day, right? So the first thing is a, a firm and lift facial with a light peel and eye treatment, collagen boosting mask. This is Bananas. It's an hour for $132. Skin Solutions over at Cable Beach, west of Bahama, 327-0500. 327-0500. They have a few packages here. They're starting to talk. Indulge your mom and yourself for Mother's Day and Skin Solutions Day Spa. Mom's uh, Spa Day package at 50 minutes is a Swedish massage, is a custom designer facial, is a gel manicure, is a classic, classic pedicure, or they get a three and a half hour for three, $330. But listen, mommy need these things. I mean, I'm, uh, I might as well tell you the truth. If it's anything like my mother, she starts to sing. My mother, she needs to stop. Every time I tell mommy that can cost... I don't think I have that. That's going to cost X amount of dollars. She says, for the nine months, I carried you. No charge. You need to stop with this song, man. Okay? You and Shirley Caesar or whoever sings this, stop it. So if you get those songs like me, ensure that you give these guys a call over at Skin Solutions right there in Cable Beach, um, west of Bahama. The number is 327-0500. That's 327-0500. We're going to be with them all week and be able to talk about these wonderful things that they're going to be doing um, out throughout the week. So we're going to talk about that. The first things off the right off the list, the Mother's Glow Best package, right? Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I, I wanted to kind of get into that. So let's get the, the you know, the, the stuff out of the way. The lines are open. If you want to have a good conversation, um, you know what to do. Give me a call. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the Family of Islands. Uh, 242 or hit me up 422-4796. The lines are, are wide open if you want to have a conversation. But like I said, I, I started the weekend off and I made a few calls. I try to be as decent as possible not to let you know the people I've called. But, um, you know, because sometimes people decide that they want to pull back. They don't necessarily want to contribute like that. Uh, they have something to say they can say it off the record. And so you want to be as decent as possible in approaching these conversations. But I wanted to have like a formal conversation with uh, someone who had significant affiliation and has um, sort of the position to articulate uh, the constitutional reform as it relates to what we've seen handed down with the Privy Council. I read a couple of things, uh, you know, it came across me, it came across my stuff, right? Uh, you know, people forward me on stuff all the time and started to talk about this idea about Bahamian men being able to pass on their citizenship to their children, no matter who they have children with, no matter where the children are, the children are born Bahamian. And the scenario that I actually read, did I read it on your stuff, CA? I think I read C CA stuff, right? Um, maybe I think Gilbert Morris, um, my very good friend, and he's my cousin, 
uh, I think he wrote it, with this sort of analogy of uh, Buddy Heal and Clay Thompson being able to have children. And Buddy Heal having a child with a uh, Malaysian young lady or, or wherever he, he actually indicated where it was, and having a son. This is hypothetical. And Buddy Heal having a son. And as a result of him having a son, this son now has the capacity, because they're automatically a Bahamian citizen, has the capacity to be able to, you know, have a child elsewhere, never visited the Bahamas, but this child be able to carry on that, this son also be able to pass on the citizenship elsewhere. And then he actually kind of theorized this concept and idea that says that if a sovereign wealth fund was enacted to the position where you can be able to, as a Bahamian citizen, uh, find yourself, you know, you know, the, the, the funds distributed accordingly. And I'm trying to surmise the thing as quick as I can. Uh, he's saying that this could be a significant strain. I don't see if I view it like that. Because Gilbert Morris and I, we have T.I. blood in us, Turks and Caicos. My father's father is from Turks and Caicos. My father is a Bahamian. My father's father is from Turks and Caicos. And we've seen in a very short, short period of time the need, the uh, sort of a clarion call coming out from Turks and Caicos. I used them because they were right there. This clarion call coming out from Turks and Caicos that indicates we need all belongers to come back. Because this island, the makeup of the island has shifted significantly. And we can no longer identify the true origin of the people that exist in these particular places. We need belongers to come back. My fear, and I think this comes in line with sort of the idea of a lot of persons saying that in 15, 20 years, we won't be able to recognize the country, uh, whether it's as a result of global warming, whether it's a result of um, um, just migration or immigration, so forth and so on. The truth is, is this such a bad thing? I open the lines for you guys to talk about it. Uh, and that's why I didn't want to be able to formalize it. I'd like to hear your opinions on these particular social matters as we talk about it. Over the weekend also, we've been able to see that uh, the king had his coronation. We've seen our prime minister go over and, uh, you know, decked out in the pomp and pageantry. Um, the only thing missing is Joan River. Talk to me. Joan River, ah, you, they looking dapper to death. This is the only thing that's missing. Because, you know, is that the core of it? You know, this pomp and pageantry, it looks beautiful. Let's talk about that. Talk about this concept that exists in these particular things. And what we read in the paper just before that, that indicated that King Charles should apologize for the colonialism that was thrust upon us over the years. Lines are wide open again. Let me give you the numbers. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family of islands. 242-300-5720. Or hit me up. 422-4796. First call on the line. Call it on the line with his live. Go ahead. A pleasure. Good morning, Howard. Greg. Hey, hey. What's up, my brother? Boy, let me tell you something. Two things I would like to, first of all, I'd like to compliment our staff of, a, of, a, of an organization in the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. And then I like that my the producer give me a moment my my views on the coronation. Mm -hmm. First of all, how the Thursday pass was my seventy second birthday. I decided this year that rather than taking money out of the country, I will go and donate my birthday to the Bahamas and keep the money here. Mm -hmm. So I checked into Margaritasville down by the Point Hotel. Mm -hmm. And Howard, let me tell you something. I must say, if they listening. Compliments to the staff of the Point Margarita Hotel. They treated Sparky like a rock star. Mm. From the time I got out of the car onto the pavement, the first thing I heard, oh, Lord, Sparky in the house. From the front desk. Sparky, everybody know you like that? Wait, the key on the other talk show host. I'm a joke. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> Go ahead, I Sparky. was on talk show before talk show opened. Sparky, I need to ask you a question. I know a lot of you young people in the door. You just me up. <laughs> if they know me like that. 
<laughs> I'm more popular in this town than, than Brave, Ingram, and, 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 and all of them. Okay, Smokey, go ahead. Ask Terry. Go only, ahead. One, uh, only one outshine me is Penlin. That's because he was older than me. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. Big compliments goes out to the staff of Margarita Hotel. Them people happy? I ask if I say, you like, you're happy waking up? They say, Sparky, this is the best place I ever wake in my life. Mm. They happy. They treat you like a king. Mm-hmm. How would you take, take you and your wife and go down there for two days, three nights? Mm-hmm. $550 valet pocket. You're right downtown. Mm-hmm. You could go next door to your boy, um, 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 Tiki Tiki Bikini. Mm-hmm. You could go upstairs, look over the bar, and look down. At, 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 at Bra- 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 what's the name again? Brown. Um, your, your boy, at Tiki Bikini, man. You could go down and get Haley, and he could look up and Haley, and he could take pictures of you, and you take pictures of him mm-hmm. from up top. You could see the harbor. Sorry, they block flowers right out. You look out, and then you see how you look down at flowers top roof. Mm-hmm. But I must say compliments to them. Now, when we come to the coronation, the thing that caught my eyes, mm-hmm. you saw that big model contestant, Bahamian, the Bahamian Beauty, um, Miss Bahamas contest. You didn't see it? I didn't know if it was Miss Bahamas contest. Yeah, yeah, man. It was between the first lady, C.A. Smith wife, brave wife, Pintard wife, and who else was there? Miss um, Penland gone in the pink and pink. Miss mm-hmm. Davis had on her gold and gold. Miss mm-hmm. um, Pintard had on her, her, her PRP blue and gold. And then the winner, I think, was the leprechaun. Mr. C.A. Smith wife had on a green outfit. Looked like it was left over from, from St. Patrick's Day. Spock. And them guys, Spock. I think they address everybody in St. What the Abbey name? <laughs> That's Minister Abbey. Them Bahamian guy. And you know, we was third. We got the bronze medal. We were the third country to enter the hall, you know. They went in alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. We, if you check it back, we were number three. The Bahamas was number three. Say Smith was first and his wife, and then Brave was behind him. Then they entered the hall. But boy, I never see so much white people bowing down to a white man in my life. Sparky. Sparky. <laughs> Sparky. I can let you go. Millions of white people was were bowing thing. down to the king. Only a couple of black people was over there bowing down to the king. But God bless. What is it? God save the king. Our king. Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Sparky. I appreciate it. Oh, Sparky, your indecency is up. Um, you know, we, we, I make joke about it. I make joke about whether or not the people at Margaritaville knows you, but I don't mean that uh, disparagingly. I, I know that there is a significant gulf between generations. And for a great deal of young persons, they don't attack, uh, uh, um, attach themselves to what's happening in traditional media. In these particular spaces, they don't, they don't really be able to... There's a lot of young persons my age, well, not my age, a little bit younger, that says, oh, so what do you do? I said, I'm a radio host. Well, what radio station? I'm on, on Guardian Radio. Oh, I never listened to that. There's a lot of young people who, you know, carry themselves in this sort of, uh, you know, they got this social pride about them that they know what's happening globally, but not necessarily locally. So I asked you that question. And the same question applies to this coronation and position, the pomp and pageantry that, uh, the tradition of our country continues to be able to put on this coronation or the shifting of what's happening over in, in England. I just want to know about it. I don't know about your views. My wife, she kind of got up and she watched the entire thing. I said, oh, thank God I got a day off, right? And so I just kind of, you know, relax in my bed. It was sort of highlights of the stuff like that, but I'm not going to sit here and watch this. I see some people say that it was up from 3 o'clock in the morning. You are wilding out in my mind. In my mind. And I don't know whether or not this would make a difference for who we are as a people. We're happy to see it happen. You know, the, um, um, the king is still the head in this particular region that we're in. We're part of 14, 15 countries where the monarchy is still, you know, the head. So we can take on that kind of position. The only question I have to you is the social relevance. Does this revive a conversation as to whether or not uh, we need to move towards, uh, move away from internal self-governance to a true sense of independence? That's the kind of question I want to ask. Let's go to the next telephone call. Calling on the line with us live, go ahead. Go ahead, calling on the line. 
Guys, please give me a call, 323-6232, 325-4316-325-4259. Anywhere from the family of islands, 242-300-5720, or hit me up on the text, 422-4796. It says, uh, three times today I've heard Sparky on the radio. Please, someone give him a job so he has something to do. This, this is a text that's coming through, Sparky. I'm reading it. It says, when Bahamians as belongers come to Turks and Caicos Island years ago, they were, all, they were often rejected. How I know? Because I'm a belonger and I tried living and working there. Turks and Caicos had no issue with Dominicans. As the men married to the women in droves for browning and hair. <laughs> I suppose they mean uh, their skin color. For browning and hair and Haitians. They are running the place now. It's too late. It's the Texas coming through. My fear as we have this conversation about the Privy Council being able to identify Bahamians globally, born to uh, Bahamian males, being Bahamian citizens. My fear is, is this such a bad thing? Let's talk about it. Next telephone call. Calling on the line with his live. Go ahead. Good day, Mr. Brown. Hi, how you doing, man? I'm okay. That's all, good. Is well, all is well with you, eh? Yeah, man, all is well. Yeah, uh, two things I'm going to touch on. The first thing I'll touch on is um, uh, with the coronation and basically the king being still uh, sovereign head with plenty to complain about. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, me, it's like, the irony is this, uh, what I see is like, we are quick to dismiss. Basically, England, that causes us to be what we are. And we are quick to basically, like, adopt Haiti, but Mr. Grant, Mr. Grant, mm -hmm. uh, two uh, words you got now, your yeah, everyday word now, that stick out like a sore thumb, but I guess they, they're very popular with you. Call, call, and, and uh, uh, the conversation mm -hmm. all day, Mr. Grant. You don't listen to yourself over and over again. No. I know you listen to yourself. No. I don't, you sound I, I cute don't. saying it, right? But it's cute. too repetitive. You have a big vocabulary. Keep telling me that. It's cute. I sound cute. A multiplicity of words you can use other than the conversation. <laughs> That's the way it's so weird out. Okay. And you say it so eloquently. Now, I won't do this with you because you, you skip over some things. Uh, you keep calling me about the, the conversation. We can fight yeah, that. Yeah, man. But I won't, you skip over some things. You start like to what? say, adopt Haiti. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I, even even like before the coronation and or even on the coronation, they basically, the talk is, you know, uh, we need to be like a republic. We need to get rid of the, the queen as our head, the king now as our head. We need to get out on our own. You know what? We don't need to get out on our own yet. Why? Because the mere fact that we haven't even started to be who we are as a people. And we're celebrating 50, 50 years of segregation only, only noticing a few set of people in this country. It's sad. I mean, it's like, I mean, it, it, to me, it, it, it's almost nauseating for the mere fact that there are so many persons in this country with so much to offer. But every time you listen to the radio, it's always the same set of people, the same set of people, the same set of people. But would, wouldn't, wouldn't that say to like, you, wouldn't that say it, to you, it, it's time it, for us to separate ourselves from? Um, um, the head or, or this this kingship, this this kind of a sovereign rule from the king's position. I have no problem. I have no problem with, with, with the sovereign head. You know, I have a problem with with the heads around here that see it fit to keep down. And I'm talking about people of their own color, anti-European black people who are on the radio most of the time talking all this anti-European thing, pro-black all the time. This country ain't all about black. This country about all of us, mm -hmm. all of us, mm -hmm. white and black. Mm -hmm. and, and it's sick to hear black people in a country that was given to, to them by white people. And even on the day of coronation, these people, and it's, it's, like, it's like a child, you, you, you do everything for them when it grows up. You know, you never do nothing for me. And, and they this. You know, it's, it's, it's sad, very sad, you know. Sad, man. Wow. Very sad. Because let me say something. Be ready to get. Be ready to be. Re be ready to be a, a republic. 
We even ain't got no military to even defend us of anything. We ready to give this country up to, to, to a group of people who can't even control themselves, but we, we, we allow them here. We don't want to give our own people a chance. 50 years. Wow. Hey, let me see your next vibe. Let me see something here. The song competition they have been right? You know what? If it's about the Haman and the Haman people, there wouldn't be no Gombe. Wow. I mean, it's sick. How you figure that? Wow. I mean, it's like, it's only a certain set of people you want to be in everything in this country. We, we are, diverse, are diverse people, you know. But it's only one set of people all the time. Get a, I mean, what, 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 what. But, hey, hey, in, in, in this life, I never dream, I never dream that we as a people would be to this. It's nothing but hating and nothing but, but, but jealousy and, and worrying about what this one get, but you wouldn't get up in the morning to go do something to get something. Mm-hmm. Huh? My serious man. I hear you call, my brother. I appreciate your telephone call. Yeah, I know man. that. that is, you know. I appreciate you, my brother. Thanks so much. Yeah, man. That has gone deep. I'm, um, I feel like there has been a, sort of a residue of Uncle Rocker from Bone Dogs. I mean, not in a bad way. Just, 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 just me. Um, I don't feel the same way. I, I know that in this generation, you start to talk about how I use the word conversation a lot, right? And how there is an expansive. Uh, vocabulary and a capability of being able to use other words in replace or in the stead of this word. I accept that. But very clearly, I do believe that there is the inability for a great deal of persons, especially this generation, younger generation, younger than I, uh, who has a, a very clear articulation to be able to speak of what their expectations are. I think a lot of things are pulled through the wire gauze or the stream of emotion. We're very emotional as a people. We know that we're uncomfortable where we are and we know that the potential for us to be able to do greater exists within ourselves. And it's unfortunate, like maybe it's a lack of education, maybe it's a lack of exposure, experience, but the inability to articulate that places us in a position that we reject certain things. I think the same thing in politics. It places us in a position where we reject one political party, but we cannot articulate as a people what our expectations are from our leaders. And I think that that's what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is that there is a quiet desire for us to be able to meet the true potential that exists within our innermost because of the external boundaries or borders these proverbial gates that's placed around us. And we can't stretch beyond that. And that's the issue. There is a significant disparity between the two generations that exist in this country. This is just my opinion. There's almost a gulf. There is a relentless allegiance for many persons who were born before 73 to the idea of the Union Jack. Not necessarily the Union Jack itself. The idea the principles, the statues, the positions, the articulation, the structure that exists, the spirit of the Union Jack. And then this latter generation, this younger generation, there doesn't, we don't, the Bahamian flag, our allegiance to the national anthem and all these things means little to nothing because there's not fortification in education, there's not determination to be able to really push forward in these areas. There's only the perpetuation of what exists prior. And I think that disparity that exists there, younger persons are saying, we can do it ourselves. And so it sounds like we don't need the monarchy. And older persons say, you have no allegiance. There needs to be able to, to be a happy medium and a very clear conversation for moving forward. Let me take my first commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Howard Grant and your company, The Foundation. We're going to be right back after this. The Foundation. The Foundation. We'll be back right after this. It's a special day for mom and she deserves the best Bring her into Baja and let's de-stress We'll pamper her and make her feel safe Get mom a nice spa day 
visit us at Baha Retreat Spa. Purchase a gift for mom and call us today at 323-6711. Make your morning sizzle with breakfast from Burger King Nassau. Enjoy not one, but two delicious sausage and cheese croissant sandwiches made just for you for only $5.75 including VAT. This breakfast classic is made with Burger King's savory sizzling sausage and melted American cheese on that classic buttery croissant you love. So say hello to sizzling morning at Burger King with two sausage and cheese croissant sandwiches for only $5.75 including VAT. Only at Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. When you testify in court, you're expected to tell the truth. Same goes for your insurance application form. If you don't answer every question truthfully, you could be found guilty of misrepresentation. Leaving out just one piece of information on your insurance application can lead to misrepresentation. That means your insurance company could deny your policy or refuse to pay your claim. This message was brought to you by the Insurance Commission of the Bahamas, protecting the interests of policyholders. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Brad, in your company, The Foundation, on this beautiful Monday afternoon. I'm so happy to be in your company. It's a beautiful day. And we are uh, talking a great deal of stuff. That's happening over the weekend. The lines are wide open, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, We started off with the coronation. I wanted to touch a few things as it relates to the previous council. We didn't have a chance to talk about it last week. Um, When the ruling actually came out, it came out on Thursday. We'll be doing uh, Small Business Thursday. And on Friday, we had a scheduled guest to be able to come in. And so we had a conversation there. So I wanted to kind of dedicate, like I said, over the weekend, I tried to figure out whether or not I formalized this conversation. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I want to give you a chance to be able to kind of throw your two cents in there and uh, your position or, um, um, you know, otherwise, and be able to say exactly what you think uh, as it relates to that. Please give me a call, 323-623-2325-4316, 325-4259, anywhere for the family of islands, 242. This is a toll-free number. Please give me a call on that, 242-300-5720, or hit me up, 422-4796. Um, make sure you pick up your Guardian paper. It talks about gun violence cost up to $49 million. The CARICOM reports documents uh, economic losses due to crime. You can read the report and see exactly what's worth. PV Constance vindicated view of 2013 commission and uh, the prime minister on $400 million drawdown from Grand Bahama. <laughs> I misspoke. That is wild. Let's go to the telephone call. Calling on the line. Uh, go ahead. Happy Monday, how are you doing today, man? Fantastic, man. What's happening with you? Uh, I have a very serious problem with this thing, but he sent our prime minister to a Woody Benson, man. I came to the conclusion that I'm nobody's subject. So mm-hmm. why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Are you a subject to that man or mm-hmm. to that woman who just passed away? When are we going to get it now that we are free people? We are not his loyal subjects anymore. After independence, all was hers. Can you please explain to me, when are we going to get it? Let me ask you this question. Do you think that that is by design to make you feel as though that you're free? I know it's by design. Because you got you got liberty, you got movement, you got freedom of movement, freedom of speech, you got all these particular freedoms and liberties to do what you want. But on paper, <laughs> there is a quiet allegiance that our leaders continue to be able to yield at the feet of these is particular because, persons. Is it because we want this knighthood or this sorehood? We can spread that upon ourselves. Okay, the United States 
got away from that. So, you know, what, what is wrong with us? Are, are we, are I feeling better than that? They did an awesome job at our forefathers that we could never, ever get away from this. I often think about that in in terms of uh, what I've seen Tyler Perry done, right? I do I've seen Tyler Perry, um, um, you know, continue to be able to pound away at this concept and idea that we can do it ourselves. We've seen Black Americans rise significantly in the United States of America as it relates to entertainment, and still they are indifferent if they don't get mentioned for the Grammys, they don't get mentioned for the Oscars, they don't get mentioned for these prestigious awards has been established years before. Uh, so I c often ask myself, is it really about whether or not we can do it ourselves or is it about the recognition from the established? Well, why don't, okay, I, I agree with you. I understand what you're saying. So why don't we just go ahead and do our own? On this side of the lake, or you want to call it, we could do this ourselves. We don't need to be, and guess what, we spend hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars to go to that, uh, whatever you call it, and, and, and I didn't come back in saying, oh, this and that and the next. I saw a flag being paraded uh, in, in, in the parade as one of the Commonwealth countries of His Royal Highness Charles III loyal subjects. <laughs> I'm a buddy subject, man. And I'm telling you to get it right. Come on, when are we going to get it right? <laughs> Think about it. We are loyal subjects. <laughs> Look up the dictionary and find out what that word means, please. Yeah. Well, anyway, my brother, have a good one. I'll I appreciate you. you back later. Thank you, my brother. I do appreciate you. Always good to hear from you. Plus, guys, the, the lines are wide open. Be a, be a part of the conversation. Um, I don't know. It's listen, man. I think we've done this enough, you and I. Listening audience and myself, we collectively have done this enough. Uh, someone called the other day and said, Howard, you've literally given persons uh, this concept and idea of how you think. They're mapping out your thoughts. I don't think this is a bad thing. Right? Uh, so you know that I'm going to be able to come from left field on these things. I've already deduced this within myself. Now, I ain't tell you I got all answers. But I've already deduced this, and I've recognized that we do have the capability. I've done some research last week before last as the Eastern Caribbean, for the Eastern Caribbean organization, right? I think it's the ECO. Um, I'm heavy on this, this TikTok thing, but not, you know, not the twerking and all these wild stuff that we out there. I keep looking for, you know, my thing is the conspiracy theories and I want to know about Caribbean, you know, politics and so forth and so on, uh, on global politics. And so I came across this thread where uh, this gentleman said that he doesn't pay taxes. He applied to, became, to become a part of uh, the, the Eastern Caribbean community. Uh, the Eastern Caribbean community has given him this sort of an opportunity that he has now an opportunity to be a citizen in, I think it's 14 states in this particular space. And he can bounce from any place to another. And I, I said, what, 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 what the hell is this, right? So I read up on it and I recognized that who leads the Eastern Caribbean community? Who? The same gentleman that we had issues with was the president of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You remember we talked about him when he started to talk uh, uh, last, a few months, a few weeks back, and started to take on this kind of position to say that uh, what is wrong with the, the judges in the Bahamas? You remember we talked about this? He leads this. You remember I started to talk about the fact that I had to read up on this gentleman. Why would he take on such a strong position to be able to talk like this, the way that he spoke? He has always been an individual who went against the social green. And the only other person I've seen to be able to take on this position of unifying a block of persons within the Caribbean region is Louis Farrakhan. You remember when Louis Farrakhan came down and uh, went on a Caribbean tour and talked about the idea of being able to unify your strength outside of Caracom? Did, do you remember? You don't, maybe you don't remember. My point to you is the prestige doesn't exist internally. The prestige for us indoctrinated and conditioned by colonialism and this idea wrapped in pomp and pageantry is the recognition from the established. It's, we're still wrapped in that. That's where the prestige exists. The prestige is we are recognized in this particular capacity. That's it. 
I don't think many of us have a desire to establish. I'm not talking about the younger people. Please know that there is a proverbial line in the sand between the generation prior to 73 and the generation after. Let's be very clear about this. The generation after, we continue to struggle. I fresh after. I'm, I'm an 81. And I can continue to be able to struggle. Me, which is a senior, my grandma always called me a senior millennial, I have this kind of a greater appreciation for what I would have gone through and the endurance and understanding for, for quote-unquote long-suffering to know that I'm getting to an objective. My children, my daughter, 15 years old, she just popped out of the thing, right? She just reached here. And she continues to ask questions like, well, daddy, this doesn't make sense. Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? And I don't even know how to answer her. I only could answer her based upon what exists prior to me and say, baby, I just reached too. I'm only 40 years old. you 15. You're fighting something that has been established before all of us was here. And the only way that you can change this is not by being able to have an isolated conversation, by unifying your voice, educating young persons like yourself, and moving with formality and intention to be able to change these things. Other than that, you're just gum bussing. This is my point to you. There will always be this, the, the, this allegiance to the formality that exists in these particular spaces. I don't reject it entirely. But my position is this. While we're doing what we can or what we must and playing allegiance, why haven't we found ourselves in the position of being able to find ourselves moving forward? Moving forward. And affiliating ourselves with others within the region. There's 44 million people in this region. And if you want to be able to connect yourself to uh, countries in Africa and so forth, there are significant countries in these particular spaces. But y'all ain't doing that. No one's doing, no one's doing anything like this. Our leaders aren't having these conversations with us. They're not talking like this with us. When, um, uh, prior to this administration being able to come in, there were significant uh, sort of talks and, and chit-chats in small spaces that actually spilled out into the media that says, we're going to look at becoming, um, um, we're going to look at becoming uh, a republic. Are we going to look at these particular things? The prime minister then comes on afterwards and says, that's not on the agenda right now. This will never be on the agenda. It's not important. We pay allegiances. We have relentless commitments. The prime minister's in the paper right now. Right now. Let's read it. Prime Minister Philip Ray Davis says he misspoke when he announced at the Bahamas promotional events in London on Thursday that the government would be drawing down $400 million from, watch me, a British financial institution to go towards the redevelopment of Grand Bahama International Airport. This is wild. Our allegiance to people who got the coin now. Not about what we need to do to get it. Not about how we could be able to amalgamate our strengths to get it, to unify our forces. But we go with our hand, with our hat in hand, and head bowed. Let's talk about these things. Guys, we're going to take this next commercial break, get to news, and be right back. The lines are wide open today. I want you to be a part of the conversation right here on the foundation. Please, give me a call. The number is 323-622-325-4316-325-4259-242-300-5720 or hit me up on the text uh, 422-4796. We're going to take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. Foundation. Found the foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Found the foundation. Found the foundation. Found the foundation. Found the foundation. The foundation will be back right after this. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. 
so rewarding with my Fidelity credit card. I get the best prices with price protection. Earn and redeem freedom points at my favorite stores. Get cash back. Plus, I book the cruise. Get your Fidelity credit card today. Call 356-7764. Ready to step into the future? From your front door to the backyard and everywhere in between. See and speak to whoever's there with Ring Video doorbells and security cameras now available at Alive. Protect with matters most, all from one easy app. Available in your Google or Apple Play Store. Visit bealive.com slash ring to learn more. We are Alive. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The foundation. 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 And we are back, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant in your company, live and in full effect, the foundation, beautiful Monday, I'm, uh, listen man, I ain't raining outside, I feel like, I felt like when I came in, there was an overcast and two drops, last time I said it's a beautiful day, went outside, it was storming, it's wild, I can't see anything from in here, but when I came in, it was beautiful, I'm hoping that it kind of retains in that particular capacity. It's a beautiful day, and I'm so happy that you're in my company today. We're out here. The lines are wide open. I want to be able to, to give you a little taste of this. 323-6232. Hit me up. 325-4316. 325-4259. Anywhere toll-free. 242-300-5720. Or uh, hit me up on the text. 422-4796. Let me read a few of these things, and then I want to pay a little something for you. This is Howard. Let's end this all. This talk about us becoming a republic. It will never happen. Do you trust the PLP or the FNM to write a new constitution? Most Bahamians will say no. And our judicial system loves the Privy Council. So let's make the best out of the Commonwealth status we have. I used to want to be a republic, but honestly, I don't think we can handle that kind of responsibility. If we were to if we were not smart enough to have amended our present constitution in 50 years, then what makes people think that we can write a brand new constitution? I don't know if I, I agree with this heavy. Um, I feel like it's a glaring truth in some respects, but the kind of dismissive approach to say that it, we don't have the intellectual capacity, I don't know if that's what I'm reading. Is it that we don't have the intellectual capacity or is it that we are so inundated, conditioned and sort of um, um, inebriated rather with this position that we're in now, uh, this lackadaisical approach to leadership and that you, we don't have to do the, the heavy lifting, that it places us in this position. What, I don't understand what this is. One part, I understand what you're saying, but the other part, to say that we can't write a, a constitution. I don't agree with that. We have some brilliant minds in this country. I mean, these people, smart. I think a lot of them are very lazy. But I, I think that they're geniuses. If the proverbial rubble meets the road, 
if and when it meets the road. I think they're geniuses. I think for the most part, so many persons are consumed with the idea of survival that creativity is rejected as it relates to what needs to happen for country. Can I say that? Can we talk like this? That we are relentlessly in survival mode. Talk to me. Can we talk like this? Or is it okay? Or can I, should I just, Howard, stop it? Stop it. Where are we in this particular capacity? We as a people are relentlessly in survivor's mode. We have been conditioned through education to expect and accept one paycheck after another and retain and remain committed, loyal as a subject. Watch me. Watch us get deep with this, you know. Y'all need to stop. Watch me. We are yet still subjects, whether you feel like it or not, on a macro level and a micro level. Talk to me. I just get preachy very quickly. On a micro level, our allegiance is paid to the establishment that many of us work for. Whatever our indifference is, we swallow that thing and carry on with the man's job. For the expectation of a paycheck because bills are real. Let's be very clear about that. And secondly, we are subjects as it relates to our affiliation and allegiance to the British crown. Whether you like it or you don't. And the only thing that can happen is for us to be able to liberate ourselves from that. I want to play a little clip for you. This is our prime minister, former prime minister. I think this would have been circa 66, 67 and those eras, anywhere before 73, anywhere from 66 to 73. Uh, send me the, if you have the specs on this particular thing, I got this from someone. Send me the, the information as it relates to that so I can be able to read exactly what's what, if you have that. But this would have been circa 66 to 67. Very quick clip our former Prime Minister, Lyndon Pinlet. Listen to this. Those fathers and forefathers have uh, really been ruling the country for, well, since we took over, since the British took over from the Spaniards. But you want independence? No, our party does not want independence. We want full internal self-government, but not uh, complete sovereign independence. Pull me back in quickly. Quickly. Watch me. This is the spirit of where we started. Whilst we continue to debate 50 years later as to whether or not we are an independent country, the PLP, it, with the head of former Prime Minister Lyndon Pinder, never pursued independence. We always wanted internal self governance. And then we got what we were looking for. But the next generation is dissatisfied. We lack the satisfa satisfaction. This internal governance ain't good enough no more. We need real independence. This is wild. Big wild. All caps. So there's no need to have this conversation. This, this set of conversation, I can, hit it, I can hit it. This conversation back and forth as to whether or not you feel like a subject or not. It is what it is. I told you before, I can no, I can never win an argument. I never understood my father when he would be quiet after my mother started to hit this kind of, this rhythm. And when Rowdy come and she hit a rhythm, my daddy would shut down. He can't talk no more. You sit there and shut up. And I pray God. I said, God, when I get my woman, I rowing back. Because you know what I'm going to say this, 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 this to me. My grandfather, he never even talked. My, gran my grandma said, you were nothing when I met you. You were dragging slippers? This is my grandmother and my grandfather Rao, and he said, there, he said, nothing. Nothing. And I said, God, when I get my woman? And I realized why he kept quiet. Because when you hit this stream, deep stream of emotion, nobody could win that argument. So you just shut up and let the emotion ride out. 
until it finds its waterfall and drift off into nothingness. Hopefully. You can engage that. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's emotional. Realistically, on paper, this is where we stand. Social applic back and forward, this is where we are. Where we decide to go from this particular juncture can't just be in conversation. It has to be with an application, with the first step to the journey of a thousand miles. Have we taken that first step? No, we have not. We have not. And we continue 50 years later to celebrate the pomp and pageantry. Lines are open. Let me take this telephone call. Call you on the line with us live. Go ahead. Well, no, I had to call back because when you sent, when you played that clip, it's a London man, that I sent goosebumps down my body because it, it tells me that what I was saying all the while is true. And, and, and it's a sin and a shame for us to be under these conditions that no, we, will, we don't want true independence. We want to be loyal subjects to our majesty and all our predecessors. Yeah, but the penance for sin is only paid for in the afterlife. In this life, <laughs> that's just the norm. That's what I'm saying. The first spirit is still lingering okay. over this country. And we have to break that. We as the new millenniums, you all, you all, you all want to call it, I call it Generation X. Is that we have to break this curse. It's a curse. Remember they say, oh, the, the spirit of bootlegging is still on this country. The spirit of policy is still on this country. That's why we are the way we are. We have to, all of us have to sit down and do what Israel did with the Bible. All of us need to pray to break this curse. Every one of us mm-hmm. need to pray to break this curse. We can't be like Achan where one family doing, don't pray. Every one of us have to pray if we want to break this curse. And it lets me know that if we seriously want to break this curse, we will do it. All of us. Wow. I appreciate your telephone call, my brother. Thank you so much, guys. The lines are wide open. Be a part of the conversation. We're talking about it. We're chopping it down. We're doing this thing. Talk to me. You're all widening out. You you see, don't... Unless and until we make significant steps towards these things, this is where we are. The texts to talk about are relentless allegiance and says how our justice system, our judicial system, loves the Privy Council. Is it that we're too lazy to create these, these positions, these ascension, the position of being able to ascend? Is that why we don't have the freedom of information with the significant teeth that, that it needs to have? Is that why we don't have the ombudsman the way that we need to be able to ensure? Is that why we have lack of transparency that exists in these uh, pockets of leadership in our country? Is that what it is? Is that where we are? That's the only question I have. Are you saying to me that the Bahamian people who've found themselves ascending to leadership in this country over the past 50 years have become, con- let's, let's do better than that. Let's not say 50, 30 years. I, I don't believe the first generation of leadership in this country did this. I don't believe it. I heard some, some stories. The first 10 years were clean 10 years. 73, 83, 82, nine years. <laughs> ah! First nine years, clean nine years. And then after that, some things fell off. Can we go 73, 83? I heard some stuff about 82 election. That's why I say that. Right? Let's be very clear about this. Let's talk about this. Let's, 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 let's look at it for what it is. This is Howard. You're going to start a big fight with that clip of pending. I could not believe my ears with that foolishness. You ain't never hear that. These things accessible to the world. You're all sitting here talking about nowhere, an independent country, and we're self-governed, and we had to know. Stop, stop it, stop it. That is not what the intent was. I told you before, we talked about this. We talked about this. The Constitution was read into the ears of the Bahamian people in 1964. Was it 64? Somebody please text me and tell me. It was, re- it was Constitution Day. They read it into the airs. They made no significant modification to the Constitution other than what a, ge- a, a, a governor general was supposed to be. Three points. Bop, bop, bop. And it was it. Everything else was given to us. 
We have yet to make modifications to it. And every time it comes to making modifications to the Constitution, it's always a political back and forth, and they create this sort of propaganda around it, whether it's gender referendum, whether it's gambling, whatever it was to change that particular constitutional position, we start to talk about the strength of the con Constitution and forget the evolving Bahamas, the ever-evolving Bahamian citizen. Send me a text, guys, 4224796. Hit me up on the telephone call, 323-6232, 325-4316, anywhere from the family of islands, or a toll-free number, 242-300-5720, 242-300-5720. Uh, says, Howard, I have a song for you about independence. How can I send it to you? 8270111, 8270111. But then again, Pinlin is the same man who dressed up in the Bellman's uniform to role model what Bahamians should aspire to be. But tell me, that clip fake, please, because that's shocking. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare come to people with you and do something like that to incriminate one of the strongest, the, the greatest leader the country has seen thus far. Wouldn't dare. I don't care how you feel about it. You could row and tell the cock crow in the morning. Three times. Then Independent is the greatest leader this country has seen thus far. He's the only one who's done anything. Everyone else relentlessly managed. Man, talk to me. Y'all just get deep, but I can do it. Today, we can do this. Lyndon Pillen is the only one, and the leadership that actually stood around him was the men and women, in many respects, because the suffrage movement actually propelled um, the PLP in their particular position. The suffrage movement the unions, all these particular entities individually found the necessity to unify and push, propel the country forward to what we had. The only time we saw significant leadership was during that era. Everyone else, just holding position. That's why I keep talking to you about convictions. Leadership should have convictions to make a decision, right or wrong. Perry Christie found his conviction in leadership. Maybe for me, I think he took on the wrong position. I ain't gonna fight it. For me, he's taken the wrong position. He's kind of, you know, put all his eggs in the basket of Bahama at the time. And he stood with conviction that we're going to go forward with that. You know, but the, the, the first 39 years, no, not, not really. Or 35 years before that, not really. Leadership should have conviction. Conviction to reform, to grow. Former Prime Minister um, Hubert Ingram carried conviction with him. But he also carried the spirit of management with him. There wasn't anything significant as it relates to growing the country. The infrastructural uh, position was already there. And I told you that the tangibles was already, the, the framework or the blueprint for the tangibles was already laid out by the first administration. The second administration, which was Lyndon Pinn and the government in the sunshine, executed a great deal of these particular things. The third administration, I don't even know what that was all about. We got to be clear about these things and talk like this. Let's take a next telephone call before we go to break. Calling you on the line with us live, go ahead. I'm good, man. I think it all depends on what your convictions are. Now, this is me going on. Close your window. You got all the breeze coming through. Okay. Go ahead. Well, you can show here. Yeah, yeah, I hear the breeze. Okay. Anyway, it depends on what your convictions are. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, history will clarify that question as far as the Leonard Pelling is, is concerned, mm -hmm. okay? But you mentioned something about the Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. We have a Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. And But keep in mind that that Constitution was, was given to us by an entity that does not have a Constitution. Well, hold on now. 
give me some clarity. What you mean by that? Hmm. Britain does not have a constitution. Okay, go ahead. In the sense that we have one. Okay. Okay, so they gave us something that is, um, um, I guess, untried, untested. You know, you know to let's look at I it. Mean, in, let's look at it in simple terms. I want to. I want to do this. Let's look at it in simple terms. Okay. Um, there is no rules, regulations. There, there's a there's a spirit of what needs to be done. I, I take Starwood Hotel. Starwood Hotel. When I worked the Starwood Hotel, they give me a handbook. My uh, the handbook is the constitution yeah. of what I should conduct myself by. Uh, Howard, go ahead. There's a difference between a constitution and a plantation. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Are we on a plantation? Yeah, no, 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 no. When you work in the hotel, you work on on a plantation, basically. Okay, so you know, don't you know, don't just don't change the stuff. Here, okay. Okay, go ahead. Now, I fight you. now, see, <laughs> I, I didn't like that one. <laughs> I like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, see, our problem is that we have not. Seek the constitution we have. Okay, mm -hmm. we haven't seek anything. Mm -hmm. You know, even even our our laws our laws regarding property and the acquisition of property still in the dark ages. Now people come out every now and then and talk about it, mm -hmm. and the persons who talk about it tend to be those who have made them off the ability to acquire <laughs> to quieting stuff like mm -hmm. that. Okay? Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, we need to get intentional, like you said. Now, one of the things that I'm going to show that we have intention when mm -hmm. a person in this country are producing stuff, not just consumers, Right now, our biggest headache is that we are, we are a consumer-based culture. And, you know, more than half of the country's working population mm -hmm. is paid by the public treasury. Mm -hmm. And we have nothing to show for it now. Bamsi may change this. Mm -hmm. Bamsi might not change this. Mm -hmm. But we need to become intentional about what we're doing. Or in a generation, hmm. you and I are going to be the sideline. I appreciate you. That's a, that's a very good point. And I believe it's less than the generation because we're having a conversation about 25 years, 20, 25 years from now, the entire makeup of the country would look different. <laughs> hey, I appreciate your call, man. Go hey, ahead. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, Tuesday night, right? Mm -hmm. Tuesday night. No, no. I go into that. I will hear this Tuesday night. return to idealism. Tuesday I will hear it. Tuesday night? Tuesday night? Now, see... Hey, I, I want to know exactly what they're talking about. Let's go to the thing. We Tuesday that. night, tomorrow night, I go on to UB. I want to hear we the return of idealism. We we know I got to be there. God okay. spare life. All right, brother. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you. Go. Thank you so much. Uh, 96.9, the lines are open. Let me take the next telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my brother. What's I, I try not to call. You tried. I can be very honest. You were absolutely I unsuccessful. Go ahead. Not to pause. <laughs> but you, you began to get excited and run in the direction of contextual incorrectness. Okay, let me hear that it. That I would not allow to start you are on the public radio. Let me hear it. And the public should not be led in that direction. First of all, this country is approaching 50 years in July. Mm -hmm. We had like you said, one of the greatest periods of our bursting of this nation within the first 20 to 25 years mm -hmm. under the leadership of Sir Lyndon mm -hmm. That is without question. Okay. I get but one. your show is called The Foundation. Okay. And what I can tell you is that the foundation is the starting place of anything. Mm hmm and you respected our foundation, mm -hmm. but you and your family inhabit a house mm -hmm. that had a foundation. Mm -hmm. Now that has a roof, and governments are continuous. Mm -hmm. So the great work of 
the other prime minister mm-hmm. cannot be diluted in a way where you would say that the foundation at all is the only thing we needed. Not go as far as to talk about what we today enjoy because of the continued work of the prime ministers of this country. And I think sometimes we get excited mm-hmm. in looking at the great work of the first person. But this country is still in the race of that relay. And the baton was only passed from one great leader to another great leader to another great leader and to this great leader. You can't measure them the same way because the time period of which they worked and did what they did in national service was always different. This and we could always argue about let's compare it to this and compare it to that and I say that's an unfair scorecard for any of them because what the Lyndon had to deal with and the cabinet was different with that with Davis has to deal with. No, I don't want you to go now. Davis had to deal with is different than what Mr. Ingram had to deal with. And Mr. Christie had to deal with something entirely different. So for the benefit of all Bahamians, let's appreciate that leadership of all our government and their leaders took us to the place that we are now standing okay. underneath a roof with windows and doors and landscape yards. That's the Bahamas that we live in. Hold on. Not just the foundation, sir. Okay. Now you may respond. Don't, don't, don't go. Don't run. Don't drop the mic and run like this. Friday had a great conversation with uh, none other than Craig Flowers. And Craig Flowers said something that I had to write. And then I pulled my highlighter out for the first time. I had to highlight the thing. Because it, it, sounds so, it, it made so much sense. We started to talk about uh, contrasting. He said that the contrast was unfair to the evolution of time. I asked him whether or not where we are now, started off in terms of vision, so forth and so on. He says, Howard, the contrast of a different time is unfair. It's unfair to contrast that because of the evolution of what has happened in the country since then. Now, let's be very clear about this. Lyndon Pinden, in his particular capacity, we've seen two prime ministers, and maybe even three, if we want to be able to kind of ensure that uh, Philip Brave Davis is actually kind of tucked away somewhere in the, in the distance there. We saw two prime ministers out of Lyndon Pinnon's leadership, the regime of leadership at that time. The foundation that was laid for the country, the layout, the spirit, the idea, the vision that was released into the minds and hearts of the Bahamian people has never been made any modifications. It, we are still on the first proverbial phase of development in this country. And that can only be attributed to the architect of that time. And the architect, no matter whether the different dispensation had a different project management. Marla, come on, let's get preachy quickly. And you know no, you I understand would, I this. Would, no, I would, I would. Respectfully. Respectfully. Go ahead. I accept, I accept your viewpoint. I accept your thought. However, the foundation is not what we inhabit, and you can't dismiss that. I am saying to you, You're, you may follow the, the plan. The project management. Someone, someone had to build it. Yeah, someone of course. Someone had to spend the money on the materials, and that is all of our contributions. And when I say all of us, the citizenry of the Bahamas, we didn't revolt, we didn't reject the leadership that we had, but we are part of it too. But the leaders, they can, you could have a vision all day inside your house, you know how it is. Mm-hmm. But unless you put some energy, effort, and some resources behind it, that vision can only say vision. So I'm saying all of this to say, I don't want us to, to, to dismiss no, this was the individual dismissing. efforts of every administration that has helped to make this country the great nation it is. And guess what? I will say this on leaving. We are still probably far short of the potential that we can aspire to. Okay. But do not ever think that everyone didn't play their part. We could measure them all we want. But this country is still progressing on the greatest relay of our generation. And we cannot always part. You know, I say, I say this in closing. You say in bulk, never has a great start in the race. But he always wins. If you measure him in the first 20 meters, he is not often in the lead. But he's the greatest sprinter in the history of sports. Don't measure on the foundation. Measure where we are in the race. And I will dare say, measure us when we get to the end of the race. Now, I don't know what the end will look like. You can be but I tell now. you, we're running, we're running a strong leg right now. 
I would say that. I, I like you. It, it sounds like a politician, Leon. I appreciate you, my brother. He's a good decent. <laughs> you can talk, Leon. You need to stop it, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, man. That's my good friend, man. Listen, I, I just want to be very clear about this. I do. I do. This is not to dismiss anything that former leaders have done. But we are still on phase one, which is the tangibles. As we look around our community right now, and the intangibles continue to wreak havoc on the next generation who have an identity crisis, who lack hope, where there is a depleting community, we recognize that phase one should have stopped for some time or maybe work in tandem with the second phase, which is building people. We cannot say, want to talk to me, I just, what, 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 we cannot say, whilst we're not dismissing anything that former Prime Minister Lyndon Pinlin, former Prime Minister um, uh, Hubert Ingram, former Prime Minister uh, uh, Perry Christie, or ministers done, we're not going to reject those things. We're still here, we're still standing. Let's be very clear about this. The next generation is significantly depleting. We're having conversations about whether or not we're going to be who we are now, what we celebrate now in 15 years. The intangibles, we have yet to work on those things. We have yet to work on the character of the individual. We have yet to be able to empower them. We have yet to fortify. We've only expanded on the tangibles, the money. But never understood, let's take education. We've expanded the budget, doubled the budget significantly. And they kind of boast about, we've doubled the budget for education. But never changed the curriculum. You're doing the same old, same old. Can there be any expectation that to get to the same point? When are we going to have financial literacy? These are intangibles. The intangibles of being able to strengthen a society to be able to move forward. That's all I say it. We ain't fighting you. Just work. Phase one and phase two should work in tandem. There should be unification to get to the position. 96.9 FM radio, guys. We're going to take this quick commercial break and be right back after this. Foundation. The Foundation. We'll be back right after this. The Foundation. The Foundation. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. The 6th edition of the Bahamas Games are on the way. July 7th through the 15th, get ready for inter-island sporting competition in the spirit of unity and camaraderie. Which island is going to win? It's the Bahamas Games. Our nation, our talent, our games. And look out for the B-Games crew coming to your island soon. For more information, call 809-1242. Or visit thebahamasgames.org. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Introducing Wendy's new Chimichurri Cheeseburger. Chimichurri. That's how you pronounce it. Let it roll off your tongue. Then get ready for some ridiculously good flavor. Fresh, herby, garlicky, green chimichurri. It'll feel like a relaxing backyard get-together with friends on a Sunday. Put in a burger. Come meet Wendy's new Chimichurri Cheeseburger with our new Dave's Craft Lemonade. Wendy's different inside and out. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. 
And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant and your company, the foundation, chopping it down on this beautiful Monday. The lines are wide open. Please give me a call, 323-6232, 325-4316, Anywhere from the family of islands, toll free, toll free, toll free, 242-300-5720. Or hit me up on the text line, 422-4796. Got a call on the break and says, Howard, man, I don't know if that guy was listening. Okay. Howard, I don't know if that guy was listening. It's not about running this this race. They kept running the same race. They kept running the exact same race. And he says, it's time to run a new race. Why you keep carrying this around the exact same thing? I don't, I mean, I feel is that, uh, I, I shouldn't start it off the saying I feel. Uh, let me ask the question. Do you believe that the, the disparity or the sort of segregation that exists in our society, the separation thereof, is as a result of those that find themselves nestled in the position of occupation with a very clear path to moving towards something? They're, they're secured by the comfort of occupation as opposed to those who don't necessarily feel fulfilled. Speaking with Craig Flowers um, on Friday, he says, Howard, I don't know a light bill. I don't know last time I pay a light bill. I don't know what it is to pay a light bill, water bill. He said, I don't know these things. I said, you call them burdens. People call these things burdens. He said, yeah. He says, after you make money and you push past these, the 90%, I thought it was a high percentage. He said, this is the 90% of things. Guys, please listen back at that. I, with Craig Flowers, we had it on, uh, I think it was May 5th. He said, this is the 90% of things that people worry about. He said, I came back to the Bahamas as a millionaire. I don't have any of these things to worry about. For years, I haven't worried about these things. He said, but now what do I do with my time? Craig Flowers is in here. As an 80-year-old man, he's going to be celebrating his, uh, his 81st birthday, he says, in a couple of days. I don't know which day it is. He hasn't said to me. As an 80-year-old man, he's sitting here and talking about um, artificial intelligence, uh, digitization, uh, technology, this particular country move forward, uh, being able to say that I've already been exposed to these things and I know how these things are. It baffles me why governments don't do this. My 81-year-old man, this, this, this month, God's bear. 81 years old. And many of us who haven't hit the threshold of 50 yet, messed of contentment, is it as a result of occupation? I said to you, are we, are we pursuing success? Or do we stay at this sort of a juncture of comfort? Let's touch a thing. Let me take a telephone call. Call you on the line with this live. Go ahead. Howard G. Hey, what's up, my brother? I got to call you Howard G now, you know what I mean? Because you you, I like your new song. But you know, Mr. Grant, <laughs> but the thing is, I must remind humanity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we know why the government don't want to really implement certain artificial intelligence systems, but it will replace jobs. It will create new problems for mankind. You know, most of us can't really see the enslavement that it would bring. It has benefits, but then I'm not going to glorify artificial intelligence. But, you know, you know, it could, it could benefit the country, but, you know, like, like it's good and evil then. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying, Howard? Mm -hmm. But it's not a holy grail to save humanity and take away all our problems and then produce this hedonistic, idealistic society. You know, this is, you are being duped, Howard. You, mm -hmm. I can't buy into that. It's, too, too much, it's, it's totalized control. It, it just, it, 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 and, and, and the gentleman who called, of course, this is a pathetic prison pl plantation, Howard. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though you leave that nest, right? This is, this is what it is, Howard. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I had a problem with the word subject. I, it's still being used, royal subjects, and they are still embracing this terminology blindly, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe because they are objects. Because they have no, they, they are not objective to anything that's that, that's being mandated from this particular royal paradigm, right? You have to be an object, and 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 most of them don't realize that these people really see us as simians, okay? Dressed, dressed up, and that's all it is. I know, and I mean, Lady Lady Ping was beautiful, and, and I like you know what I mean. But the thing is, we need a revolution in the mind, Mr. Howard Grant, mm -hmm. okay? And I was also taken aback because. Somebody was saying with the baby boomers, that, ah, listen, I used to I born in 1964. Mm -hmm. So what that simply means is that this is the only year in which a person can decide whether there's a baby boomer 
or a gen or a gen a gen X, right? Mm -hmm. So X means unknown. So that means I'm I'm unknown. Mm -hmm. I'm a baby boomer. But you can't just paint all baby boomers or Gen X with the same broad picture. No. You 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 did you was yeah he was talking about he was talking about the uh the constitution and the coronation and all that, right? Mm -hmm. And then the colonial steel was stain brain. Mm -hmm. I, I may be a, a, a baby boomer or, or a Gen X, right? But how would I, and then people would say, you, you, the clip you played with Ping, and then I heard the statement, right? So I was wondering if I was hearing right, and he's saying not full independence. But the thing is, how would. I can play it again. And then, and then you were saying that uh, people were saying they're independent, but and, uh, you got some talk shows, they argue, and they say, I didn't work with people who say, like, go by what they observe, how would I see being not independent? Mm -hmm. So I don't need a mindless status quo person or whoever they think they are to tell me that I, we are not independent. I'm seeing it. Why should I believe what I'm not seeing? This is what people have a problem with. We believe what we are told too much. That's why it's still a plantation, Mr. Grant, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, we're not going to get it. This, this, uh, 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 let, let's give an idea. This is what Babylon system, right? The way how it is set up, the Bretton Woods system, the reserve currency, the, 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 the new moral world order, it's all designed to fail. This is why these metropolitan countries, these, these developed countries have to produce debt in order to print their money, and they, cre and they create stability in the third world sub-region. Who is it benefiting? Who has the most, most earth resources? Why is it still the poorest country? You have to realize what it is. Be just not willing to accept what it is. Now that this is the information, you and information overload, and histories and mysteries and antiquities and everything is being revealed, you see the position of, uh, you still see the position of servitude by third world leaders. I was saying on the years for radio, I mean on the, on the radio for years, third world leaders are myopic. They are blindly subservient. And it, it's just it, it's just what it is, Mr. Minister Grant. We, <laughs> we're seeing something, and we're seeing a different narrative. We need a revolution of the mind. And the only way to get it is to educate or knowledge up ourselves, because ignorance is, I hate to say this, is a tool on Amar Ontario of the status quo to keep the people backwards. And that's what it is. And so we even see it, even as Dwight Swan reveals that uh, we pay it to be into the Commonwealth. When I first said that on the radio, people were telling me no. But then I read narratives in the United States in, in our Constitution. I can't remember which, 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 which section it was, but I read it about 20 years ago, and it said that they were always indebted to England because of the discovery of Jamestown, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay? But, so what Dwight said is nothing new. And so I like thank the, rev the, the, the revelation to wake up the sheep because we are truly not independent. We need some independent sense because... What you see now is you have a system whereby the populace, their input doesn't matter. We don't have a system where you can have a vote of no confidence, where the people can overthrow the PM, do what they have to do in a civilized manner. You cannot even speak your rights. All this talk about human rights. People still go into court without lawyers. So all these different things, people say all these things. But I want the gentleman who called, you know, he's, he made some great points, you know, because I respect Ping, right? But what I'm saying is, what is a great country? Yeah, you could be saying it's a great country when I don't see how it. And Why you, would you, you say that? You hear every day. It's a great country to you. I, you, you, I subjective. You subjective. But that's what I asked. Didn't I ask Where that question? Where is this great country that these jokers but talking I, about? I have huh? to ask the question. I, I have to ask this question. Where, okay, is your view in the environment that you exist based upon your position in life, economically? Ah, uh, 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 listen to me, Howard. Being geographically positioned in a beautiful place doesn't make you a great country when there is a caste system that's inspicuous or being done blindly, but financial dep dep deprivation is a form of a caste system. Mm. Most people don't go to Paris Island. Most people don't go this way. Most people don't go that way. A small island like ours, the people are still being ostracized. We've been ostracized out of our beaches. We're not making speeches. We're not, we, we are weak, pathetic people. We are being ostracized out of our citizenship. It seems he makes the sense, Mr. Davis came in, the, the migrants to the South seems to be coming in boldly and more. And mm. so I listened to all of uh, Stephen Hahn and all of these people. Them. But my question I asked on them the other day on the eye opener, but they didn't answer. What was your sentiments about the statement of the Colombian necktie is more of us than them? And what was your sentiments about the burning of our behemoth flag in our country? Man, I would mind, listen, man. How could be? Why we defend these people? Some these people them on the sidewalk, they get stored. They ain't paying no business license. The minute the behemoth go and do it, I need anybody to tell me what's going on in my own country. But they lucky only one person. Yeah, this is the weirdest, most pathetic country in the world. I'm a great, great country, where, bro. Great fool. You might still go live in Great Britain. Why Great Britain is the only country with the word great in front of them? You all need to go read and study all history, man. Give thanks. I appreciate you, my brother. I'm uh, always in a passionate position. But I, I, that's all I want to know. I want to know, is the line in the sand 
the segregation where none of us pronounce the segregation, the unspoken segregation that exists, uh, the difference between the comfort of your homes, the accessibility to a mortgage, the, uh, the, the kind of comfort of your, your, your vehicle, is that separation in society based upon the acquisition that you have? Do you view the country great based upon your subconscious expectation to get to this point and now the realization of you being able to touch these tangibles in this space? Is the country, the country is absolutely wonderful. I've now attained this, 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 and this. This is a great country. In comparison to the other side that says, I can't realize my dreams in this area. Why am I always being stopped? Why is there this sort of a glass ceiling? What's going on? Because all of us are in the same, you know, space geographically, but all of us don't carry the same sentiments. I don't know whether or not we'll always be unified, just like Mario Moxie and T.G. Uh, Morrison and, uh, and others would have actually said from the church, there could be no expectation to have uh, seamless unification in the church, but there is only one objective, to be able to serve the kingdom of God. Are we in the same position? There could be no expectation for all of us to view this country in this sort of position that it's a great country. But the flip side of that, do we have one objective of being able to move forward and grow the country? That's it. This last caller before we get out of here. Caller, you on the line with us live? Go ahead. Go ahead, caller, you on the line with us live? Hey, Howard. How you doing, Matt? I'm good. What's up? Howard, I've been listening to your program from the beginning to now. Uh, I must, come, <laughs> first of all, congratulate you on, uh, on, on at least this segment being a very, very pro pro provocative one. Yeah. You know, um, right now as it stands, you know, you asked about, I, I, I saw where you touched on uh, previous leader, leaders and our current leader right now in relation to the, the progression that the pending administration would have done for this country. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of perplexing to realize that, um, you know, many of us out here who have, who have lived during that era would say that the plans that they put forward were very visionary. They have accomplished quite a bit of those uh, visions that they have put forward. Mm -hmm. And we have yet to see a prime minister coming forward to this time actually produce any, could I say visionary, I'm talking about captures the world's attention by storm and really puts an eye and the focus on the Bahamas as being a very progressive nation. That does not happen for a very, very long time. And for anyone to come here and try to give kudos to, to, to the current leadership or the past leadership since him for uh, saying that they have progressed this country forward to, to, to the benefit of every Bahamian citizen born in this country, I would say it is very laughable. The closest person in the Caribbean right now that resembles anything that Salindan and his first cabinet would have represented for the Bahamas would be Mia Motley right now. Mm -hmm. The brave move that she has done to move her country into into full, uh, um, uh, not revolution, but what you're a, a republic, rather than being in the uh, being a pseudo independent country, uh, 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 you know, uh, actually uh, being. Uh, subjected or being um, uh, re re relegated to another country. That, that is, that is earth-shattering, and, and it is, it's a very earth-moving experience. Wow, and so I think we as Bahamians, we need to stop sticking our heads in the sand, and let's get serious. We want leaders who is going to move this Bahamas progressively forward, not just on a social aspect, but on an economic standpoint, where every Bahamian in this country, with their talents and gifts, can finally lend their talents and gifts to the building of this country and make this country great. Mm. That's what the average Bahamian is asking for. Mm -hmm. But the opportunities, are, uh, the certain opportunities are available, but the real opportunities where you can really yield maximum benefit for the talent and the work that the Bahamians want to put forward to build this country, they are sorely lacking and they are not to our advantage. Thanks for taking my call today. Thank the you, hour. my brother. I do appreciate it. I can play this last clip again. You know, we played this already. But let me let you hear it one more time. You ask me, I tell you, this is the prime minister. I think it was circa 67 to 72, somewhere in that particular area. I'm going to be able to play that so you can hear it right now. Go ahead. Whose fathers and forefathers have uh, really been ruling the country for, well, since we took over, since the British took over from the Spaniards. But you want independence? 
no, our party does not want independence. We want full internal self-government, but not uh, complete sovereign independence. I want to thank you so much for being able to participate in this conversation with me today. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Uh, I often have an opportunity to be able to open up the lines, and uh, I want to be able to hear the heart. I thought you would talk to me more about the coronation. I thought you would talk to me more about um, the position that the Privy uh, Council has taken. Uh, you know, we started with that sort of a monologue. I thought you would talk to me about these things, but uh, what's obviously heavy on the hearts of Bahamian people, especially in the wake of being able to see another coronation and the pomp and pageantry attached to it, is the idea of a true independent Bahamas. In our 50th year, as we celebrate independence, I put that in air quotes, independence. In our 50th year, as we celebrate this sort of uh, our position, you need to know, based upon your calls, based upon the text, whether or not we're going to be able to amalgamate the strength to really find ourselves in the position to get to phase two, which is a true sense of independence. Let me read a few more of these texts before we go. It says, good afternoon, sir. One of the issues are the politicians have held this country in bondage for too long. They have been enough lawyers in parliament and governance uh, to change the constitution to move away from the colonialistic style of governance. This is a text that's coming through. There's the next text. It says, is there a possibility that the present constitution in, in, engenders a plantation mentality. Absolutely, in my view. This is my bad. Uh, it says, Howard, after 50 years, the country is still running on corruption. It is why none of the current or former leaders fear how technology and things like uh, freedom of information will expose it. Keep revealing how these old leaders shut the door behind them, Howard. Play more clips. This is my bad. I meant the corruption is why they fear tech and more will implement the freedom of information. Um, that's the text is coming through. It says, it says uh, what's 52's blood pressure number? <laughs> it says, he needs to calm down and just make his point, right? This is the text is coming through 52, don't fight me, right? It says, Howard, this place, uh, if great, if you got money, I suppose it says is great. This place is great if you got money. It's suffering if you're lower middle class to high class. As the text is coming through, he says, what happens if the UK repeals the Bahamas' Independence Act? This information is coming through. Um, for the most part, I see where your heart is. For the most part, I see it. And the only thing that we can do is continue to agitate socially to see the reform that we desire. That's all we could do. We're not a violent people. I'm not going to be here being able to spew the idea of tyranny and segregation and stepping up and fighting. And um, Your fight could be with your words, with the pen. I don't think m many of us pick up the pen. We have to do some stuff, man. Unless you be like my daughter, talking about why these things can happen. And I'm going to take the same position. It doesn't happen because you don't want it to happen. Let's make the thing happen and continue to be able to move forward and make these things done. Let me see if I can read one more two of these texts before we go. Somebody send me some stuff. It says, literally just got this text. I'm not going to fight you, sir. These are some texts are coming through, guys. I want to thank you so very kindly for tuning in. Tomorrow we have uh, a pre- a show that's actually going to have um, you know, some great information in it for you at the top of the hour. In the second part of the hour, we're going to be able to uh, possibly open up the lines again. Wednesday's show is going to be dynamic. Uh, we got some stuff laid out for you, possibly doing some traveling. Uh, hopefully that was not premature. I'm excited to be able to do this. There's a lot of reasons to get out there. If you guys want me to come to your island, please give me a call, 827-0111, 827-0111. We're going to take the foundation to the entire nation. Let's make this thing happen, guys. I thank you so much for being able to tune in. This is 96.9 FM Radio, Guardian Radio with Howard Grant, right here chopping it down on a beautiful Monday. Stick and stay for Chivago Line with Z Live right after this. Have a great day, Bahamas. See you later. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. The foundation.
Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. 